one day somebody does something unspeakable to someone else, to someone you hardly knew, man, you do something about it because you can. The story comes to us from the Austin American Statesman. <clears throat> this is a really kind of a lengthy story. I'm going to try not to read it all to you, um, but I'm going to try to give you the bulk of it. Again, the links to these stories is always in the description box. But <clears throat> we're going to Uvalde. Well, Uvalde, Texas is kind of what we're dealing talking about here. But the gist of this story is really about what governmental entities, city, county, state, may or may not do on their social media accounts. What do I mean? Well, as we know, the Uvalde Police Department has faced widespread criticism for its delayed response to the gunman who entered Robb Elementary School, killing 19 children and two teachers, May of May 24th of 2022. We remember that one. And that criticism extended to social media, where public outcry led to the police department's decision to disable comments on their Facebook page, a page that previously allowed it. They say the Uvalde Police Department Facebook page is an informational page only and does not allow comments, says the PD's page. <clears throat> a similar note, appears on the city of Uvalde, Texas Facebook page, the city's page. Now, beneath each post, there's a disclaimer from the social media platform that states Uvalde Police Department Limited who can comment on this post. Many residents assert that prohibiting comments is a violation of free speech covered under the First Amendment, but is this an accurate interpretation? New York resident Michael Palmer sued the city and Uvalde Police Department for $500,000 in April of this year for their restriction on comments on their Facebook pages, according to the Uvalde Leader News. <clears throat> now, the lawsuit comes after a U.S. Supreme Court ruling in March of this year clarified that public officials' online accounts may fall under state action criteria if they wield state authority and establish such authority on their posts, even if it's on their personal accounts. Although it did not specifically outline protocols for governmental agencies, the lawsuit alleges that the city of Uvalde and Uvalde PD's restrictions on Facebook do not comply with the recent high court's decision because government officials run the page. Hmm, interesting. They say, quote, the city does not have a lawful right to block users' comments or even the users since the Facebook page is considered ran by government officials. That's the lawsuit is stating. A decision has not yet been made, but in Lenke versus Freed, James Freed, the city manager of Port Huron, Michigan, posted about the pandemic that happened 2020 on his personal Facebook page. Facebook user Kevin Lenke responded expressing his displeasure with the city's response to the pandemic. Now, initially, Freed deleted the comments, but later blocked Lenke from commenting. Because Freed identified himself as the city manager on his Facebook page, Lenke sued Freed, alleging that his First Amendment rights were violated as he believed the page constituted a public forum. And therein is the argument. In the Supreme Court opinion, Justice Amy Coney Barrett asserted that many government officials use social media for personal communication. And in cases in which officials have distinctly separated their personal social media posts and accounts from official business, they retain their rights as private citizens and have the capability to block users and comments, she says. The justice says a close look is definitely necessary in the context of a public official using social media. There are approximately 20 million state and local government employees across the nation with a wide range of job descriptions from governor, mayor, police chief, teachers, healthcare professionals, transportation workers, says the justice. The judge goes on, many use social media for personal communication official communication, or both. And the line between the two is often blurred. So she says, um, 
such officials may look like they are always on the clock and it could be tempting to characterize every encounter as part of the job, but they are also private citizens with their own constitutional rights, says the justice. But James Freed's page was not designated either personal or official, and he often posted information related to his job. So in the official ruling, the Supreme Court established new guidelines and unanimously held that, listen to this, a public official who prevents someone from commenting on the official social media page engages in state action under U.S. 1983 only if the official both, number one, possesses actual authority to speak on the state's behalf on a particular matter, and two, purported to exercise that authority when speaking in the relevant social media posts. And there you go. Now, information from the ACLU of Indiana, that's the American Civil Liberties Union, suggests that the issue is more nuanced than alleged in the lawsuit. According to the ACLU, official government pages cannot prevent people from joining a public conversation on the social media account because of their views on the topics at hand. They cannot block critical voices from asking for government services through the social media account because of those critical viewpoints. They cannot prevent people from being able to see social media posts that publicly announce government information or policy because of their viewpoints. Viewpoints. But the organization states that the associated page can limit other kinds of interactions, and that includes restricting all comments or deleting comments not relevant to the post. Quote, I'll close with this, an official can also preclude all comments or in certain circumstances limit discussions to certain subjects. In other words, Government officials may have no obligation to open the social media account up for public comment, but if they do, they cannot discriminate as to which views get to be expressed in those comments. So I tried to keep it from being boring. I tried to keep it non-boring. Uh, I was just trying to get through this one without putting you all to sleep. So if you're still with me, God bless you. Group hug. Um, if you're still with me, God bless you. But no, let's, I'm going to close real quick, but I want, I want to throw this out there for you guys to chew on this, to discuss this, because I hear this all the time on, on YouTube amongst the First Amendment audit community. We frequently hear people who try to make a comment on Facebook, usually on a police department or city web Facebook page, just like here. And they're saying, look at that, they took down my comment. They deleted my comment. I'm, I'm suing them. That's a violation of my First Amendment. 